is that he begins to align men together. Now, beyond their primary assignments, so that he can orchestrate an operation in a territory. This kind of alignment is not something that is achievable by mere acquaintance. I'm talking about spirit brood alignments so that uh, the intent of the Lord can be born. It was one of such acts of God. I, I, I told him, heaven moved. That's why we are here today. But it's, it's a long story. Heaven moved. And if heaven moved, it means there is something on the mind of God. So we are here as hunters to find what is on the mind of God. Thank you for this privilege. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. And we thank you because of your excellent majesty. We thank you because of your sweet presence that is domiciled. Let your name be glorified. Make unto yourself, Lord, a great name tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. There is nothing as powerful as the witness of the Holy Ghost. The purposes of God are born by that quiet witness uh, in your heart when the Holy Spirit causes you to experience the ventilation of the harmony that exists in him. In the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, that's just by way of saying uh, we are here because there's a ventilation. There's a ventilation from the Holy Ghost. It has nothing to do with any of us. Something uh, is brewing in heaven. Something is brewing. In the book of Acts chapter 1, we see how ordinary men, normal men, natural men, came in contact with the Lord Jesus Christ and became recipients of spiritual capital. And we have the book of Acts in the Bible because there were such men that acted under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And it's needful for us to understand that your life in the Spirit is a story that God is telling from heaven. Anytime you are in alignment with the Holy Ghost, what you produce is heaven's story manifested through your vessel. So we have a story here. And uh, it was orchestrated because men yielded to the Holy Spirit. And so God was able to emboss his own history within the landscape of human history. Hallelujah. Just because men yielded to God. And tonight is one of such moments. And uh, um, the Lord will... We yet tell a story. He will add something to human history because his spirit is in charge of what is happening here tonight. 
Let, let me jump so that I will not take so much time. The screen is staring at me. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea. In all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So this is talking about spiritual capital. This spiritual capital is supposed to, is intended to galvanize us, to give us capacity to bear witness of Jesus' resurrection. You will notice that the issue concerning the resurrection of Jesus was an issue of controversy because the authentic individuals that would have brought adequate testimony about his resurrection received a bribe and they decided to distort the story. So there will be a need for people that have encountered Jesus firsthand alive to bring testimony to a generation that will no longer believe the authenticity of the story of Jesus. So in order for us to become such functionaries, God will occasion an encounter so that you can meet with the living Jesus. And everyone that has met with the living Jesus is saddled with the responsibility to bring witness concerning him to a dying generation. Hallelujah. Well, if you don't believe that, I need to take you back to act. I want you to follow me. I want you to see the sovereign things that God did in the apostolic company. And while I do it, I will tell you what God is saying now. Okay? When we get to a certain point, wait, where is that, where is that guy here? Oh my God. Amen. Well, those that know what I just did, oh, if you know, you know. <laughs> Amen. Uh, if you go to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 3, you will see the layout. Because what is taking place in Acts chapter 1 here is a capacity building program. And Jesus is trying to educate his functionaries that will be saddled with the responsibility of extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. So he decided to equip them. Now, these, the window of this equipment was consistent with the 40 days interval between the time that Jesus resurrected from the dead and his actual public ascension. So one of the items here, if you read verse 3, you will see that Jesus had to show these guys that he was alive. That was one of the things he would do to a functionary that is intending to place an investment upon. The Bible says to whom also he showed himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. It will interest you to know that the way he showed himself alive here was not by doctrine. He didn't come with doctrine. In the book of Luke chapter 24, when he was walking with the disciples to Emmaus, he revealed himself through doctrine, starting from Moses. Uh, you will notice that at that time, he, are you there? Are you with me? He decided to conceal his identity. And in Luke chapter 24, he first of all began to reveal himself through the scriptures as he walked with them to Emmaus. He started from there. And he, the Bible says, through all the scriptures. That means he had to go to Isaiah to show this was the program, this was the pattern, this was the plan. He had to go to Zephaniah. This was the program. And the, the program, the pattern, the plan is littered across the entire aspect of the scriptures we call the Old Testament because that was the only Bible that existed in the time of Paul. Are you there? And then the Bible says, in the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 44 and 45. Can you give me 44? So in Luke 24, Jesus revealed himself through the scriptures before he revealed himself by encounter. Are you there? Yes. But in Acts chapter 1, Jesus revealed himself by encounter to, 
to prove to them that he was alive. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all the things must be fulfilled which was within in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Can, if you know the Old Testament, the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms is the entire document called the Old Testament. So Jesus did a summary of the Old Testament and showed them that the content of the Old Testament were testimonies witnesses about him revealing to them that they existed in a generation where scriptures came alive but yet they were so blind that they could not see the hand of god it was after that that he conducted his surgery in verse 45 what did he do then he opened their understanding that they might what so he took them through the dressing room of logos and brought them into Rema. It took them beyond the shadow. So that they could see the spark. It was a surgery he conducted. Spiritual surgery. And for anyone. That has not experienced the encounter. That registers this surgery. The Bible will still be a storybook to you. You will not see. The rise and fall of nations. Because of their stand concerning Jesus. You will not know why a king in a nation that is so powerful will be cut short suddenly because he stands as a hindrance to the purpose of Jesus in the territory. The Bible says then you open their understanding. But in the book of Acts the layout is different. What he does in the book of Acts is not scripture. What he does are uh, encounters he exercises strange authority and the reason why he did that was because he wanted to register this fact that he was alive so are you there with me now so what i'm talking about here is the functionaries that god is re recruiting at this time a men that have had an encounter with a living Jesus. Not just doctrine. Someone told me that she, her CRK teacher in secondary school was a Muslim. Hallelujah. Was a Muslim. And he was very, very effective in delivering the knowledge of CRK but it was obvious that Jesus had not performed the surgery on him so he was gliding and surfing through pathways that if he had mercy from God he would have entered into light but you see in the midst of all the water he was surfing across he was still dying of thirst because Jesus had not yet opened the door to the pavilion to him now in Acts chapter 1 verse 3 he was able to achieve what he wanted which was to show himself alive after his suffering it would take something very powerful to undo what was done when they saw Jesus hanging ah! and how his body flowed with blood something very powerful had to happen in order for them to believe that that same Jesus that is all hanging on the tree he lives it is when you have had that encounter that he is willing now to invest spiritual capital on your life because part of your preoccupation will be to bear witness that Jesus is not dead you will need supernatural tools to be able to achieve that and so he makes available to you spiritual capital my emphasis tonight is based on the capital ye shall receive dunamis after that the holy ghost is come upon you the word dunamis as you know it has two meanings in greek language but that's not my issue. 
it's it's from the word dunamis that we have the english word dynamo right and a dynamo is that part of your generator that you need to apply mechanical energy to in order for you to achieve maximum oscillation for those of you that have small generators and there's a lever that you need to pull you're applying mechanical energy to the dynamo with the hope that the dynamo will achieve maximum oscillation if maximum oscillation is achieved then the capacity of the generator that is potential can be translated to kinetic and if it is translated to kinetic then you will not need mechanical energy anymore it has capacity to sustain subsequent oscillatory motions now there is a reason why jesus used the word dunamis dunamis and i want to explain to us before we begin to attend to the book of acts of the apostles and anywhere we can get to with the time that we have we will stop there are so many greek words he would have used there is a hyperbolo is a word for power um iskus is a word for power in greek language kratos is a word for power in greek language uh so there were numerous assortments of words he could use but he used the word dunamis so you shall receive it that's the description of the dimension of investment that you will receive when the holy ghost comes upon you now let me explain a little before we read again how many of you have heard of crude oil before crude oil crude oil for those of you that are chemists or chemical engineers you know that crude oil is a mixture of complex hydrocarbons uh, and it happens to be that crude oil is not useful in its crude state it's a, it's a bag of potential but yet it's not useful in its crude state it must go through some form of refinement you must introduce it into a fractional distillation column in order for you to begin to see its useful fractions separate out at various temperatures and pressures are you still there that's why i use the word dynamics because the first meaning of the word dynamics is potential energy crude potential energy just like crude oil and in its crude state it's not useful and that's why it is possible are you there how many of you still remember that jesus was in a boat some time ago and he was sleeping in the boat and people were dying and he was still sleeping you remember that so it, it, it means that jesus can be in your boat and you can die because it's not useful in his crude state that is you need to do something to activate the usefulness of the potential dynamics so when you introduce the crude oil into the refinery are you with me uh, and it interests you to know that the refinery happens to be your ability to speak in tongues uh, that's the only gift that we have from the holy spirit that you can put to use by your own will only gift and that is captured in the book of first corinthians chapter 14 where paul said that i will pray in the spirit i will pray in my understanding also so it, it, it's something that you can decide to um do at will it responds to your will i will pray in the spirit i will pray in my understanding also so when you begin to pray in the spirit what you are doing is that you have activated your refinery and then the complex mixture begins to go through process for those of you that have done refinery operations before you know that the first product that um fractionates from the column uh, associated gases lpg the type you use for cooking heating gas it fractionates first at very low temperatures it comes out of the complex mixture and then you can trap it and then sell it because it's useful are you with me then when you begin to go further you begin to have products like aviation to to bind carol that is used to drive your jet engines and if it's downgraded it is household kerosene 
Then you have premium motor spirit, which we use for our vehicles. Then you have AGO, automot automotive gas oil. Then heavier products begin to find expression. It means that, are you there? Uh, this is a digression. What I'm saying now is a digression. Actually, this is not where I'm going. But I just wanted us to understand that uh, the, the weight of the product that you can generate from your refinery is a product of how long the refinery is in use. If you need to move a demonic weight from your way, and all you can produce are gases, gases. The energy you have is insufficient to move that weight. You will need some heavier products. And the heavier products are the ones that fractionate much later in refinery operations. Would have trapped the gases, would have trapped uh, kerosene, would have trapped a premium motor spirit, would have, would have trapped diesel before the heavier products like bitumen that you can use to do hardcore will now come out. Now, just in case there's an obstacle you've not been able to push. You've not engaged your refinery for long. Meanwhile, are you there? Yes. A true refinery should run for 25 years before they do turnaround maintenance. Not the type in Nigeria. Should run for 25 years. They are just getting product. Getting for 25 years. After 25 years, they say, hey, wait, let's, let's see. Is there any rust? Is there any so if you decide that your own refinery will work and break down and after two weeks the turnaround maintenance will start for another one month then you put a product then you try again you will never have the flow of energy that is needed to move you out of the realm of obstacles meanwhile that's a digression I'm more concerned about the mechanical energy aspect because you need to apply external force to dunamis in order to get the dynamo to achieve maximum oscillation. So you can be praying in tongues now. Uh, the, because you started at will, there is still humanity in it until you come to the climax when it is the entire spiritual infrastructure takes over the process. That's when you have gone beyond the mechanical input. Are you there? Now, when you get beyond the mechanical input, you are no longer responsible for what you are saying. What you are saying is given to you. What you are saying is beyond utterances that you as a human being can produce. It's coming from a place that is beyond your capacity, beyond your wisdom, beyond your influence. And as long are you there? As long as that flow continues, you make way for God's realm of civilization to begin to come here. So, part of what Jesus, because what we are trying to investigate here are the things that Jesus taught them in the apostolic seminar. We we'll see it revealed in their practice and their procedure. Are you still with me? So let's go to verse number 13 of Acts chapter 1. Don't, do not forget that as long as the dynamo is active, then we are producing and downloading civilization from heaven is no longer in our hands is in his hands now so this was their preoccupation if you go to the book of acts chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 you will see their preoccupation and when they were come in okay um let's do 12 so that you will get the background then returned they unto jerusalem from the mount called olivet which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey and when they were come in I hope you know that the Jerusalem issue was part of the prescriptions that Jesus gave them that they should so even though it was not convenient they knew that was the, the location 
because um, the encounters they had with Jesus was by appointment. Jesus will appear in their midst, give them an information, an update. This just took place in heaven now, and this is my current status. On the strength of this status, all power is given unto me in heaven, on earth. Then he said, go ye therefore. It was an appointment. Are you there? Then he will vanish from their sight. I said, uh, well, before I, I vanish, um, I'm going to meet you on Thursday, and it will be in Wuse Market. In one of the shops, he'll give you the address, and then they'll be there. And then he will appear there. So, they were used to these appointments with the Lord Jesus. And so, when you begin to work with God, and that dynamo mm, is flowing, part of the intelligence that will start coming to you are seasons and times of appointments. Because in those times of appointments, what God will be doing is to let you in on some decisions that have been taken in heaven that is going to affect the earth realm. So he begins to give you insight about appointments. If you are living your Christian life and you don't know the experience of a spiritual summon, a time where God sucks you into the spirit, such that nothing in the natural seems to make meaning, except you decide to turn your eyes to the fires of God, then you don't know what I'm talking about. You have not used your dynamo enough uh, to come into the knowledge of appointments in the spirit. Appointments. So they, 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 and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room and abode there, both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew and James, the son of Al Alphaeus and Simon Zelots and Judas, the brother of James. And what was their preoccupation? They, these all continued in one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So it was a prayer meeting, and they didn't know how long they were going to pray, but they were asked to tarry. They were asked to wait. They were asked to remain in a location. Because God wants to superimpose heaven upon the face of the earth so that they can they can receive a driving force from heaven. When I say driving force, I'm making reference to the way Jesus was driven into the wilderness after his baptism by the rivers of Jordan. The moment he was baptized, the next thing that happened was that the Bible revealed that he was driven into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I was, I was, I was wondering, because if you were there at the baptismal service, you would have heard how that God, the Father, brought accreditation to the life of Jesus. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And those of you that are into education, we have a few al alphabets that we use to classify students. A. What's the bracket for A? Excellent. That's from, is it? So, well, in Nigeria, it's 70. But I went to Ghana, I asked them the same question. It was, it was, it was uh, 80. A was 80 in Ghana. But ours is 70. Now, so Jesus was an A student. Because the father said, this is my beloved son. In whom I'm well pleased. And I was expecting him to promote him, give him a portfolio, give him an appointment. He drove him into the wilderness. That's what the Spirit of God did. It was contrary to what we expected as men. Are you with me? And that was the story that God was telling from heaven. That Jesus has now become a product of heaven. This is heaven's product. He has heaven's badge. He has heaven's name. He has heaven's accreditation. He has heaven's approval. Right now, he's going to be tested, and this test, testing we're talking about is not company based tests, just like when you get um, uh, Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz, they are one ten thousand um, points in the Mercedes Benz chassis car, all right, that were welded. There are ten thousand welding points on that car. That's number one. Number two. Are you there? Yes, 
the Benz has a back axle kind of engine. The reason for that is they have spread the weight. 50% of the weight is at the back and 50% of the weight is in the front. And that's why Mercedes-Benz company says, if you find a Benz that is upside down, take the picture. Send the GPS coordinates of that Benz. And it's not as if you were the one that put it. It happened in action. If you find it, send it to them. They'll give you another one. Because of the balance. The weight is spread. Do you understand that? And number three, before an engine qualifies to be Mercedes Benz, it must have, it, it must have uh, run on the bench for 1,000 hours. If you can't run on the bench, they'll be ch changing oil, changing 1,000 hours. If you can't run for 1,000 hours, it's not Benz. Meanwhile, all of this is a company-based test. What we are talking about here, when Jesus was sent into the wilderness, is it, it's an outsourced test. And the test we are talking about will be conducted by a spirit. And it was the Holy Ghost that sent him there. You see, we, we, we may not understand the book of Acts adequately if I don't bring in some fillers. When the Holy Spirit takes control, you, by an act of your own will, you have become a person whose refinery is active. That means... You are saying you want spirit life. You are saying you want to do it the Holy Ghost way. You are saying that you want to yield. You are saying you want to be useful. <sighs> the first thing he did for Jesus when he came to that point was, can you go for test? We have accredited you in-house. We have done our in-house test on you. So we want you to be tested outside. No support system. No launch box. He was alone on the island of testing. In fact, because the test was so important, he even arrived at the testing ground before the test. <laughs> he was not going there to fast. He decided to fast himself so that he would be able to survive the test. Meanwhile, he was not going there for fasting. He was going there for testing. All of these were occasioned because of his driving force. He had a new driving force. The Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Spirit will take him to places that he doesn't want to go. Have you heard this kind of talk before? Go where you are celebrated. It's, it's not in the Bible. Because the Holy Ghost will take you places you don't want to go. That's how the book of Acts was written. Men, even though the, the, the flesh was there, self was there, even though ambition was there, they decided that they will walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So God was able to tell his story through their lives. So he went to the wilderness, not because he wanted to, but that was the agenda that was captured in the Spirit. That was a life he lived. It was not a life of convenience. He was led by the Holy Ghost. So these guys were praying. And they were praying and expecting that God will send the promise that he has made. Hallelujah. Amen. I invite in the Holy Ghost. Just like this church is doing. Inviting the Holy Ghost. Inviting the Holy Ghost. Night VG. The moment... The Holy Ghost becomes the one that is the driving force huh? of the company. The story of the company will shift from the wisdom of pastor. It will shift into God what God wants. And you might find that what God wants is that he, he needs eight people to leave here quickly. You know, we are, we are ministers of the gospel. We are pastors. We want people to, more people to show up. Because we have capacity, we believe we have capacity from God to be able to bring them ministry. And I, I'm not doubting that. But when he becomes the driving force, he will begin to do things that is not part of your expectation. And you will need a lot of courage to follow on. Because you might want to be going south, he might start taking you north. And if the book of Acts will include you, and me, then we must be foolish enough like our first ancestors were
to yield to him even though what he might be emphasizing is contrary to our expectation you will need to put expectation on the table have you heard people say this service today we are waiting for your expectation because that's what God will you have not known the sovereignty of God you have not tasted of it there is a place where your expectation has no value Because you will not expect that. You came out an A student and heaven came and spoke and then the next day, hey! Wilderness. That's what God does to his best. He takes them through a situation that they don't have the authority to control so that he can be their king. Now, so these guys were praying. They say, ah, Jesus promised us that something is coming. Ba, 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 ba. The thing came. In Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat on each other. The first thing that happened after this took place hallelujah you know it was a sound that came from heaven because the day of pentecost did not begin from earth it began from the throne room in heaven it wasn't a function of their prayer that what happened on the day of pentecost was not a function of their prayer it was a function of the fact that jesus gave them a promise Thank God they were praying. You know, sometimes when you don't see from heaven's perspective, you actually think that you are doing something. <laughs> so they were, they were doing something. I said, yeah, we are here. In fact, if you check Acts chapter 1 very well, you will see something like a roll call. The, the names of people praying, they, they gave us an insight. It was as if they were marking a register to know who was present because it was 500 people that saw Jesus rise into the clouds and only 120 were available on the day of Pentecost. So some, a roll call, some form of accountability. Had, all of that were the human things that they put together just to uh, uh, maybe convince themselves that they were waiting, waiting. On. And on the day of Pentecost, something begins from the throne room and i don't have time to take us to the studio to the back end of this scripture to show you the politics that took place in the throne room the promises that the father made with the son the reason for which the holy spirit was leaving heaven to become the actor on the stage of the performance of god's will upon the face of the earth all of that the guys that were praying did not know they just say oh, okay mary is here peter is here andrew is here matthew is here hallelujah The first thing that happened, the word sound in that scripture is an alarm signal. Not just, whoo, whoo, was an alarm signal. And that alarm signal caught the attention of so many people. Now, I'd like us to see the, because human beings will be attempting to explain spiritual things. Let's see how, how well they try. Oh, first of all, all right, are you still with me? Verse 5. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Why were they confounded? Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying, one to another behold at these not all which speak galileans oh i don't have time to show you a map and show you galilee and to show you that the greatest fans that jesus had were the galileans it was the jews that killed jesus not the galileans huh? well at these not which speak all galileans how here we every man 
in his own tongue wherein we were born the Parthians and the Medes and the Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Pangeria and Pamphylia in Egypt and the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, first of all, what, what was it that came from heaven? Sound. It was a noise. Are you there? That noise that came from heaven now is not just chaotic noise. What it had produced was something that people could understand in their language. Now, I want you to see what was released and the outcome, the output. So that personality that decides to stay in that prayer wheel because it's mechanical energy, it's generating kinetic energy, and you remain in that civilization, very soon you'll be able to interpret the movements that are obtainable in the spirit realm and to adequately articulate them. Now, the body of Christ in Nigeria is still infantile. The sound that is among us is not yet clear, it's still distorted. The reason is because we have too many strategies in the body of Christ. And we don't know what it means to create and to manage a revival. It means that that prayer wheel will never go out. Because that's the me mechanical input that we are going to bring to the table. Are you there? As long as it keeps running, that civilization will start finding expression. The first symptom of the civilization is that uh, these people receive discernment. Uh, they had capacity to interpret the waves that were flowing in the spirit and to fully articulate it and to dispense it. There were many speakers that day, all right? But they had, they were saying the same thing. It was people that heard it in, 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 in uh, Egyptian language when they interpreted. It was the same with people that heard in, in Cappadocian language. So there was like a unity in delivery. Because the Spirit of God had activated many people, but he was saying one thing. The chaos goes when we are in alignment. The unity of faith is possible when we are in alignment. It is possible for, we to, for us to be in different locations, just like you said, and it's the same deliverable. The body of Christ in Nigeria, that real church that is needed by spiritual activity, and is receiving things from heaven. That real church is not yet popular in Nigeria. And that's why it will take time before God gives you friends. Because that real church is still in its infantile stage. And it is rising from the shadows. The, 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 the spirit of supplication is it, it, coming back again. And the spirit of intercession is, which is the will of prayer that will keep the civilization going. Then we'll begin to articulate things. Sound will become voice. That's when you begin to see music ministers that will come with such sound, such voice, that you know you cannot find this in Computer Village in Lagos. Sound will become hmm? voice. That's the first symptom. Ah. It seems my lecture is almost over. Because we need to go to the practical part. This is theory. Hallelujah. Alright, move with me quickly. From verse 12. Let's see the second thing that happened. The civilization continued. And it started growing. So it, in, in, in this stage of the civilization, it will be easy to know the mind of God. Because so many people were saying it. And the status of a prophet in the context of the New Testament is a man that has the ability to say what God is saying. 
you, those guys, you, I, I, I don't know whether you, when you study the Bible, you, you think about Apostle Paul, whether they were insane. For, because it was insane to say that there was a commonwealth that captures the Jew and the Gentile in those days. That God, they were saying what God was saying. And that was prophetic ministry. So what I'm talking about it, 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 is that as this civilization grows, because we refuse to drop and to allow the prayer wheel to sleep, a time will come when we are saying the same thing. So a proof that we are tapping from the same frequency is that there is a similarity in what we are saying. It means that we are in the same plane in the spirit. And that's how you make friends. That's how you make friends. Because if you make friends any other way, it will end in chaos. And I tell you as a man that has missed it many times on that ground, chaos. No, no need to. <laughs> Verse 12 of Acts chapter 2, then I'll try to see how we can shift into uh, the practical aspect. And they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to another what mean is this when you hear a Jew say what mean is this he's trying to compromise what is taking place with prophecy if this is if this is so significant why is it that no prophet ever spoke about it what mean is this from the spiritual perspective so people were trying to align it with prophecy to see if this is not just a record that has been broken, but a prophecy that has been fulfilled. They, some were trying. And others, the Bible says, began to mock and says, these men are full of new wine. Just because there was a possibility that the move of the Spirit will be held in bad light, God activated one man there and gave him a unique grace. The grace of an interpreter. Are you there? These are new abilities that are coming into the earth. On the account of the fact that the civilization was kept. If you go to the book of Acts chapter uh, 2 verse 42. You will see. And they, you will see words like. They continued. The job description did not change. Operations never changed. They continued in prayer. They continued Steadfast. You will see those kind of words there because that's the engine room of the operations that kept the civilization going. And, and as long as they kept it going, new dimensions of grace began to come. Now, because the move stands to be misjudged, so God now released the grace of an interpreter. And this man never spoke like that before. He was trying to bring perspective so that the generation we understand what had come from heaven. So the next thing that happens after that noise becomes voice, then God will begin to raise interpreters. Because when he begins to do things upon the face of the earth, people will want to say, we are the ones doing it. No, the context is larger than any man. So you will need an interpreter to bring perspective. This is that which prophet Joel speaks. And he began to unveil things and began to talk about the covenant of David and, and how that covenant has to do with the throne. And that Jesus, being a descendant of David, is the one now that has exalted, been exalted in the heavenlies and has been given that throne that David's earthly rule represented. He has been given that throne in the heavens. And that is the office of the Christ, the administrator of kingdom things because the center of the kingdom of God is the administration of God and the center of the administration of God is the throne of God and the one that sits there administering the purposes of heaven happens to be Jesus the Christ that is his new in office and in fact the Holy Spirit came out of heaven to come to operate in the air to give validity to the throne that he occupies that's why the Holy Ghost is here and so just in case a miracle is done now it is not because we know how to pray the holy spirit did it just to bring validity to the office that jesus sits in the heavens and and this guy never learned this from any theological school in fact if you go to uh, theological schools the first contradiction that you will learn in theology is that this peter's message 
is not theologically sound. That's the first thing. One of the first things. You, that man was not doing theology. He was piping down from heaven. It was a knowledge that came to him. A wisdom that came to him to bring perspective to what God was doing. He was operating the capacity of an interpreter. In Nigeria, right now, they are not up to four interpreters. That's why the average, it's, oh, we are celebrating an in, infantile possibility. They're not up to four interpreters. Those that have eyes to watch what is going on in the body of Christ. Meanwhile, the description of an overcomer, according to the book of Revelation, is he that has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, not he that has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to his own life. Then the interpreters began to rise. That's the next strand of that civilization. Are you there? I'm trying to interpret God's history that was forged into human history. Because men decided to yield under the Holy Spirit to act under his influence. Then the day of the interpreters rose. The teaching and preaching of the Bible is going to go into another, another orbiter. People will teach the scriptures with such clarity as if they were there when it was written. Then you realize that the same spirit that was, was up on the writer, that same spirit is upon them. And they are operating as interpreters. Giving shape to things that are formless. Giving life to things that are dead. Using words that were handed up by the Holy Ghost. There's been so much talk in the body of Christ without direction. Where are the sons of Issachar? Who will warn us when danger is coming? Who will tell us that a beast is encroaching our borders? Who will give us a game plan on what to do and how to get it done? There are too many questions than there are answers. Because the interpreters are lacking. So in the place of prayer, he told me that the days of in the interpreters come again over your land. That's what he told me. He told me this afternoon. Job chapter 33 as I round up. Then we'll go to the practical. Those days are upon us again. <laughs> You see, there's no time in the teaching for me to show you how that move affects thrones. I'm talking about political thrones. It will keep growing. First of all, it will begin to establish functionaries in the house of God, the body of Christ. Then it will enter into society. It will shake the throne and align it. Anything that has authority, that has the capacity to speak, it will possess it. I don't know how to say this parable. I shouldn't speak this plainly. The wisdom, okay, if the wisdom comes, I will tell you. <laughs> a wonder will be seen in our nation. A wonder. Yeah. A wonder. Because the dragon did not know that just a few people speaking in tongues, that foolishness of speaking under the influence of the Holy Spirit had power. You know, so he said, well, we're in charge. Oh, oh, you're in charge? So if it's done corporately, it becomes territorial. Do you still remember in Solomon's temple, how many priests were there when the presence of God came and the priests could no longer minister? Do you still remember the number? There were 120. It's the same 120 on the day of Pentecost. That is what it takes. If at least 120 people are in a they don't want to do their will. They don't want to do their agenda. They just want to be there as instruments. Their priesthood can shake the root of things that bedevil the land. There is a force coming. This force will be so strong that Satan will not be able to master it. That was why it is first tried in the wilderness. Uh, 
He went into the wilderness to be tempted, to be tested. And the outcome of what took place in the wilderness was the outcome of what took place in the heart of Jerusalem. They did a test in the wilderness. Nobody was there. And Satan lost. A day will come when they will do it on the heights of Golgotha. And the day they killed him, they talk, they had ended it, but they just set him free. The one that won in the wilderness won on the mountain top. I came to tell you that battles have been fought and won at the backside of the wilderness that people are not aware of. And what is about to happen is that that victory that has been secured in, in hiding is about to be made manifest in public light. The book is called Acts of the Apostles because men acted under the influence of the Holy Ghost. So if we cannot be stopped from doing wah, 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 wah. the last of the story has not been told. <laughs> if you are still with me, say amen. Sorry. My time is gone. We can't read the book of Job anymore. I would have added, added some muscle, but okay. I think pastor is giving me a sign. Maybe he's saying I should read it. <laughs> Job chapter 33. Beginning from verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in the slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men, and seal it their instruction. Have you, has it ever happened to you before? You saw a dream, and even though you are a civil engineer, you couldn't interpret it. You, you, you can lay a cornerstone for any kind of building. You know the calculations of, of safety. But you just saw a site. And all of the calculations you did in civil engineering and mathematics, you cannot make meaning out of it. He gives you that, that in fact in the book of Job chapter 32 that's one of the evidences of the fact that God is greater than man it's because his communication is higher than the frequency of thought of the wisest man he can give you a dream and seal up the understanding it means that the spirit of, of revelation went into work into an active operation but he held the spirit of wisdom so yes you had the disclosure but it is it, not useful to you. If, if it has ever happened to you before, God is calling you to the place of prayer. That's, that's what it means. He's showing you that I'm greater than you. Eh? So come to me for then it's until he pours out the spirit of wisdom that you'll be able to ah, it will just it's an anointing. That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He kept back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain so that his life abhorred bread and his soul didn't dainty meat his flesh is consumed in a way that it cannot be seen and his bones that were not seen stick out yea his soul draweth nigh unto the grave and his life unto the destroyers but if there be a messenger with him an interpreter if there be a messenger with him, if there be an interpreter and then he gives us an insight uh, that this one, this, this kind of people, they are rare. One among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness. Then he is gracious unto him and said, deliver him from going to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's and he 
shall return to the days of his youth. If there be an interpreter, if there be a messenger, even that which you think has come to the end can rise again. He said that the days of the interpreter they have come again. Men that will receive wisdom from God. Hallelujah. Are you there? Yes, you notice he gave that guy a dream. He sealed the understanding thereof. It was the understanding that the interpreter had. That he could undo the protocol of death. Do you realize that the book of Acts never ended? It's not. Check the conclusion. It is because your own story must be added to the chronicle. These are the days again when men will need to act under the influence of the Holy Ghost. In the next three minutes, can we just connect? A strange season comes upon the church in Nigeria. Our firstborn status is about to be consolidated. Functionaries of brilliance, of fire and light are about to be dispatched to the ends of the earth as interpreters to bring perspective of the details concerning the move of God in the land. And you are part of that which the Lord wants to do. The streets of the city in which you dwell shall be recovered. The name of darkness in the locality shall be forgotten. Because a new day is about to spring forth. And men again will tell a story through their lives of obedience. A story that is being told from heaven. Oh my God. Psycho Peli Mande Broska Fala Bacadia Mescuvilando. If we can find an interpreter, one among a thousand men, then the Lord will find the ransom. The appeasement will be accomplished. And the hand of God will come over the land again. Yasokeli mantala bonde. Brisco feli no kelia. Habando bramina siko beli. Vatoske tamakuli abahatale. Lombres kiso salakunda balize. Presu kapando mahalia ha pres kofi light ikaban sheli kopre ketpado amaske tole maske tatale abraita kombelama sukatala abres kofi do kombeliama. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one shall become a strong nation. Mi amo sami Rai kapala masuke braskito menda We give you glory We worship you because of the time that we have entered into Time of mercy A time of grace A time of the rebirth A time of restoration Asi koberis Geminae to kabalama Prahasata branta babole maledi Aledo nisko breva lahantelia We give you praise In the name of Jesus Now listen I see in the spirit I see I see a lady and I see a lamp upon her head. When I investigated, I found 
um, this lady has the calling of a prophetic intercessor. A prophetic intercessor. Now the Lord will release an anointing upon you. And you will begin to see visions of heaven. The things that are going on in heaven. God will begin to give you some intelligence. Some intelligence. Some intelligence. Because through your activities, earthly permission will be secured for heavenly interference. And as I speak, as I speak, the hand of God will come upon the lady that I'm talking about as I speak. Earthly permission will be granted through your activities for heavenly interference. The spirit of God will rest on you. Will rest so strong on you because today, oh my, I go sell him de mahalat. He promise, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask this evening for my left hand side to my right hand side. So the choir stand anywhere that lady is in this auditorium. I ask that you stretch forth your hand. And locate that lady. Let, let, let your hand come upon that lady. Let it come so strong, so powerful upon that lady tonight. Let it be so powerful, so powerful, so powerful, so powerful, so powerful. He, he could even come stronger. He comes stronger. He comes stronger. He comes stronger. He comes stronger. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Move. Your journey begins tonight. It begins tonight. Let sight be given unto you. So that you will not judge after the sight of your eyes or the hearing of your ears. Now I see Hallelujah Hallelujah Before I pray the final prayer I see healing angels Now if I don't know which of the glasses You are wearing Which one is medicated well, all of them look fine. But if there is anyone that has, is putting on, medi oh my God, there is a, a river flowing. What you are putting on is medicated and you want to see with your, your eyes. Remove those glasses. And lay your hands on your eyes in a moment. We have just a few minutes. We have just a few minutes. What you're putting on is medicated and you want your eyes to see. Lay your hands on your eyes. Remove the glasses. Lay your hands on your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus. I bind every blinding spirit. Blinding spirits be bound. Blinding spirits be bound. And come out of the eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the yoke of short-sightedness, long-sightedness, let it break right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I say, I see. I online eyes see in the name of Jesus now you can remove your hand and check so if you notice that there's an improvement don't keep quiet the rule is if nothing happens say nothing 
If something happens, don't keep quiet. Check your eyes. If there is an improvement, come here. If there's an improvement, come there. Check your eyes. If there's an improvement, let, let's meet here. If there's an improvement, let's meet here. Check it. If you need to read something, make sure you conduct the check and you notice there's an improvement, we'll meet here. It's not time to clap. Let's find out why she's standing here. Now, there's still one last prayer we're going to pray for the Holy Ghost to distribute spiritual gifts. And the fire of God will come on you. And your journey will begin. Your journey, even though you see yourself with kings, your journey might not lead directly to the palace. It might lead somewhere else. So when you say amen, say it with understanding. <laughs> yes. Uh, hallelujah. Can we have another mic? I want to extract something. Okay, you help me. Find out what happened to them. For fire. Uh, uh, Now, because the first gift that is going to be released is the gift of healing. If you believe this night, from this meeting, you will start seeing miracles. We wait on you for fire. You know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing some people healed online. That. So those that are checking the decks online, please, uh, if you got a healing online, let our desk officers know about it. In the name of Jesus. Yes? What happened there? You can't see far without your glasses. It was very clear. What's the name of is that short sightedness? Come, can I touch you? Father, in the name of Jesus, we say this is permanent in Jesus' name. Now we can give the glory to the Lord. Yes, what happened to him? I've used that glass for over 18 years. 18 years. The eggs come. Gone. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. And we say this is permanent. This is permanent. This is permanent. In the name of Jesus. Now, the reason why I called you people is because one of you is going to receive a mantle. And the only way God said that we know is that the person will be healed. So my calling you is not to show that I can. No, no. So in the next uh, 12, one minute, in the next one minute, the anointing will come on the person. Father, in the name of Jesus, show me who you have chosen and let the grace come on the life of that individual from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I give you, I give you such as I've received from the Lord, from the crown of your head. Strange wisdom will begin to operate in your life. Strange wisdom, strange insight, strange wisdom. Oh, it's two of you. Go in this thy might. Sorry, we are out of time. We wait on you. We wait on you. We wait on you. We wait on you. 
we wait on you I lele la la bo maya I lele la la bo zena la maya I lele la la bo maya Si ala makanda mabore na salabo mana Now what is that? She had to conduct a check. I like people that check. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come. 